Hyde Street, number one. We're actually looking at spooky stuff around spooky season. Time recording. Hyde Street is from the horror part of the Ghost Machine line, which currently has four distinct branches to it. The others being the Unnamed Universe, Rook Exodus, and the Family Odysseys. Or rather, no the. I guess I've been reading too much Batman. Adding the in front of everything. Determiners everywhere. We've been exploring the Ghost Machine outings on this channel, and we're going to continue. I'm also always intrigued by our horror outings. Let's dive in. I'm Sasha, this is Casually Comics, and I hope you like Twilight Zone vibes. First, a brief overview. Hyde Street is set center around the the various inhabitants, residents, and people who just happen to stumble upon this street that exists at a seeming cross point in reality. The people there are somewhat monstrous, and they're taking part of some kind of collection of souls of people who happen to stumble upon the street. The first issue introduces two main players, Mr. X-Ray and Pranky. These two are not only competing for souls, but they also have some kind of personal animosity. So that was the overview. Now we're going to get into more details, and since we're so close to release, spoiler warning. If you don't want to know anything, you've been warned. And forewarned is forearmed. Hyde Street was first shown in Ghost Machine number one in January of 2024, a preview book that had snippets of the various universes and characters, and some descriptions of them. Hyde Street was the last featured in the book. And it's a fun teaser. It's not something that holds info that will make it difficult for the reader to just dive into issue one of Hyde Street, but Hyde Street number one does have some Easter eggs or references to things that are shown in this teaser, that because of the connection perhaps give hints as to some of the horror that will unfold in this series. The first page in particular, the Hyde Street Amusements page, is enjoyable for its throwback to old comic book ads, which will play a significant part in Mr. X-Ray's backstory. So if you saw his design instantly thought of those old timey glasses, you were supposed to. The teaser basically showcases the base premise of people happening upon Hyde Street and being led astray by its denizens. It also seems to seed the idea that the people who happen upon this street are probably not of the best caliber. This is also how issue one opens. So if you did read the teaser, it is a bit repetitive. But realistically, there's a significant portion of people who most likely did not. Issue number one of Hyde Street is written by Jeff Johns, without by Ivan Reyes, who is also credited with the story. Ink Danny Mickey, colors Brad Anderson, and letters Rob Lee. We open on a seemingly sweet old lady who runs into the character we will come to know as Pranky, who has a bit of a different look. He's been gingerfied. There's a fun little visual gag going on with his design, since he's a boy scout, but he's pretty far from it. But it also plays into his tactics that he utilizes, he uses basic scout techniques, helping old ladies cross the road, selling cookies, selling lemonade, that kind of thing. I was born in Montgomery originally, but my husband and I moved here after he got a job at an accounting firm down the street. That was a long time ago now. That's interesting. Do you have any kids? We had a daughter, but we lost her when she was five. My husband is gone too. Thirteen years ago this very day. Hmm. I could have sworn I parked right over there. This construction has me all turned around. I don't recognize this street. Oh, young lady, I meant to ask you. What are you hiding? Excuse me? A lot of the first issue when it comes to Pranky raises some subtle questions, but they are there. So this is how old he actually is because he's referring to her as young lady, but that could have a dual layer because he could just be being charming, but also he may actually be really old. If it is just meant to be a bit of flattery, it has that dual layer because it's very condescending. There's also still the question as to whether or not all who wander onto Hyde Street are less the seller individuals, or if that just happens to be who we've seen so far. You mess with a kid, especially your own, I mess with you. Look at the nice little detail in the attachment for his scarf. It's a nice touch. After that setup, the rest of the issue focuses largely on Mr. X-Ray, or Mr. X as Pranky refers to him, and his backstory. He also becomes the narrator, whereas before we had no narration boxes. So for the rest of the issue, it's his POV and we follow. Mr. X has a bit of a Rod Serling look, and he talks like him a little bit too. Just give him an ever-lit cigarette and he's all set. I want out of here, but you're making that difficult. Where is here, you ask? There is a street just around the corner, both familiar and unknown. A street branching off every small town square and cutting through every big city avenue. It is a place where the wicked and cruel are drawn to the crossroads of morality and madness, with the inevitable destination of not merely death, but something far worse. You're about to enter the scary door. I mean the Twilight Zone. I mean Hyde Street. As mentioned, the rest of the issue is dedicated to X-Ray or... Frederick Xavier Ray's backstory, as well as a few more details about Hyde Street and how it seems to work. The transition between the present and his backstory by utilizing the X-Ray ad page is excellent, very smooth, and the segment establishing what type of person he is is done quite well, particularly his disdain for children, which is a nice touch given his antagonistic relationship with Pranky, and also what starts to be set up towards his relationship with his own children. Mr. X is an opportunist who's willing to take advantage of people, and he's willing to seek out the easiest targets, such as children. But Brian Stream don't sit on thrones and they don't live in castles, none of which are included. Everyone in the world lies, Jim. We're all in a commercial for something we're not. Remember what Mr. Milton had plastered on the walls of our old office? Um, sell them what they want to believe? 
sell them what they want to believe. And kids want this all to be real. X-ray glasses, piranha people, giant-sized monsters. But it's not. We're disappointing thousands of American children with this mail-order junk. I have never ordered anything out of one of these comic book magazines, largely because I'm too young for many of the ads that are being referenced here, but it feels like there's a layer of someone who ordered from some of these and got scammed. Or maybe that's just being really well brought forward. Have any of you ever bought any of these things and been disappointed? Were the C people not as advertised? I know they weren't. <laughs> While this segment works well for X-Ray, there are moments where it's a bit clunky. This on the exposition front, so this is when he describes the other people, like his business partner, because there is a section where he is describing his partner's history to him in detail. He's meant to be belittling him, but it can read as very chunky exposition. Although in all fairness, it's there also to establish a character trait, which is meant to be the idea that he can see through people, which is going to play into the abilities he seems to have gotten later on. We don't fully see his abilities yet, but we do see the x-ray glasses. But I can definitely see some reading that segment and not finding it the most organic. Other things fare far better, such as the buildup of the negative relationships that Mr. X-ray seems to have with many people inside of Hyde Street and how they started, such as his relationship with the world's smallest monkey, which is something we saw teased back in the Ghost Machine number one preview. Here we see that it's a monkey that he ordered and had shipped to them and he was playing to just sell it as a pet. It freaks out because it's terrified and he ends up accidentally killing it. A poor monkey. Yep, 14 floors down. Oh well, at least it was quick. I'm in no mood for your antics today. I don't know how many more times I can apologize. I said I was sorry. We get some more hints of the other people who occupy the street, some who have set up stores and establishments to draw people to them. We also see the beginnings of how Mr. X-Ray came to the street, which is implied to be Pranky's fault. I was no saint before I found myself on Hyde Street, a man with a few dark chapters written in the margins of his life. But the people I've encountered here, they make my past seem as harmless as a lemonade stand on a hot summer's day. Soon enough, you'll meet some of them in the Twilight Zone. The people here need to collect souls for a mysterious being called the Scorekeeper, who is being set up as potentially the scariest of them all. Mr. X is seeking to free himself, while Pranky is seeking to trap as many people there as he can. Our last panel gives us even more of a look at the types of people who may have stories, as it lists a group of characters and their tally. Mr. X needs to bump those numbers up. Them's rookie numbers. End issue one. This issue is trying to set up a lot. It's trying to give you a taste of the street, one of its main characters' backstories, and more than one hook. There's the will the Mr. X escape plot. What's the deal with Pranky? Who is the scorekeeper? The concept of this series will likely be most appealing for those who are fans of horror anthology fare, because it has that kind of flavor to it, even though it's also setting up an overarching plot. It has a good structure for being able to branch off and do other little stories inside the same universe because it's all happening on this street. There's also already set to be a little spin-off called Devour. So it does have a lot of expansive potential. I'm curious for the main book to see how the overarching plot and the potential episodic nature balance with each other. It certainly made me intrigued for issue two. However, I can see that aspect also being something that is not appealing for those who are not fans of things like that. Mr. X as a POV character is going to be interesting as he's not overly sympathetic, so it remains to be seen if the other characters yet to be met will make his quest to escape Hyde Street easier to root for, if one is meant to root for him at all. Based on some of what we've seen, potentially not. The design choice of having his actual irises as x-ray glasses is a strong one, and it matches with the characterization he was given as a man who prided himself on being able to see through people. There are also just some very fun art moments in this. There are tons of little details to be seen and sought out. You can feel that a lot of this was very deliberate. It's a solid premise, and I'm really keen to see it evolve, as it feels like a work that could layer well, but we'll have to see. This is only the first issue. However, if one didn't identify with Mr. X, they may potentially not really care to explore where the story is going, they may find the balance to be off, or they may just not find anything to latch onto. Different strokes for different folks. But all of these are just my thoughts, and I want to hear yours. Did you read Hyde Street number one? Does it intrigue you? Do you hope it leans more into an overarching narrative, or that it's more episodic? I want to hear from you, so please put all your thoughts down below. And while you're down there, please do YouTube things. Like, share, subscribe, hit that bell notification so that you never miss a vid. Thanks so much for taking some time to spend discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.